Good morning. So welcome in all of our rooms and uh, at the Woodlands campus online. I'm Pastor Ken. You say, yeah, but I thought like Ben Stewart was preaching today. He is, and he will in just a moment, but we need to have just a quick family chat sort of around the kitchen table um, first because um, we've got a little problem here, and I wouldn't be my job doing my job if I didn't tell you what it is. As you know, we made huge adjustments as we came out of last year into 2016, trimmed down staff, trimmed down ministries, tightened, tightened, tightened our belt, as many of you have had to in the current economy as well. I've been giving you those quarterly updates along the way, and you've seen we've been tracking along uh, above the waterline and in the black and went into the fourth quarter, certain that's gonna be our best quarter yet because it always is. And the bottom has fallen out here precipitously, which leaves me and our leadership team scratching our heads saying, what is going on? I think two things. The first is we've got a good uh, contingency here at Faith Bridge of people whose jobs are in the oil and gas world and some of them who don't have jobs now and uh, some of them who have less job than they used to have um, and but many of these people who were just tithing faithfully and giving generously and 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 several of whom have even had conversations and told me we can't give right now. We can't give, especially at the end of the year. Um, and we feel badly about that. And, and what can I say? But hey, you know, God is in control. And I'm sorry that you're going through what you're going through. Um, so that's kind of the, the, the first reason that we've been able to conclude. But that alone shouldn't tip the apple cart over, right? Because we're a large church. I mean, I think there's about 6,000, 7,000 of us who call Faith Bridge my church, okay? And so there's still a lot of other people and that shouldn't just you know, be knocking it over. And, and so that's where we found ourselves saying, okay, so what else is going on? And I think it has to do with this. I think that there's any number of us, and we probably know who we are, who we come here, we love the ministry, we love the preaching, the music, the kids' ministry, the mission trips, and the youth, and all the stuff, and the bridging for tomorrow, and the tutoring, and the international stuff, and all the stuff that, that goes on. We just, when the baskets come by, never are a part of that. Or if we are, it's very sporadic. There's not really any intentionality, really any plan to it. And um, it sort of reminds me of the, the word picture uh, that Warren Buffett, I think it was, gave some time ago. When the tide goes out, then everybody gets to see who was skinny dipping all along. And I think maybe in God's providence, what's happened is the tide has gone out and taken a contingent of our congregation, the oil and gas-based people, and it's exposing this reality that a lot of us are here, and, but we aren't ever helping happen, uh, you know, make happen what is, is, is happening around here. Um, and there's a myth that goes on um, that I've heard with my own ears. People saying, well, you get grant money, right? And you get government money and you... No, we don't get any. There's no other sources. It's just 100% people who say, I'm going to be generous. Now, I know what some of you are thinking right now. You're like, oh my gosh, I can't believe you're coming out here. You're going to try to guilt trip me and make me feel arm twisted and, and enough pastor, enough pastor. You know, that's just like the church we came from. You know, they used to do that. So I thought I'd finally found a safe church that didn't do that sort of thing. And here you're doing it. But wait a second. I think, you know, if you've been here for any length of time, 
that we're not that kind of church and I'm not that kind of pastor. I've never come out and given a talk like this in 18 years. Okay. In fact, so much have I wanted to steer us from ever being that kind of culture that I think perhaps I've overcorrected and not been forthright enough and not been um, the teacher that I should be and, and the, the leader of the team making sure that we were teaching steadily on this spiritual discipline of personal giving, of generosity, which then gets me concerned about, oh my gosh, if, if so many of my people are anemic in terms of the personal giving, because that's not happening, then what's really happening in their personal prayer life? Are they even having a prayer life? What's happening in their personal Bible study? Do they ever even, are they even really reading the Bible? So I'm having this existential crisis of the soul as the leader, just trying to figure out, okay, you know, I I thought we were, you know, we've taught through first Peter, we taught through Daniel, we've been having great series and everything, but I have to own the fact I haven't led us to talk about the stewardship of our finances. And the pull of our culture is always working against that, isn't it? And so I think many of us know that a lot of these basic building block, these these tools that go in the toolbox of any growing Christian, if one of them starts to fall out, many of them start to fall out at the same time. I know, though, um, what happens. We start to, to, to think, well, yeah, you just didn't even know my life and I'm so busy and you talk about having quiet time with the Lord and prayer time and Bible study and giving and you just don't understand how busy I am and overextended, you know, we're, we're just doing good that we can get here every third or fourth week or, you know, whatever. Pastor, <clears throat> um, you, you just, it's just what you're talking about here is just like saying, I'm gonna go from being a couch potato to climbing Mount Everest. And I kind of know what that feels like. For years, you know, because you see me, I carried about 30 or 40 pounds too many. And then I ended up in the hospital nearly dying one night, but God rescues me. And even after that, I monkeyed around for a while and still said, well, you know, you know, and, and eat my bluebell and all this kind of, until finally, you know, the Lord kind of shook me and said, what is it going to take for you to get serious and put together a plan and take responsibility for your progress? And so on February 1st of this year, I began to work a plan. And I've stayed on the plan. Now, not every single day I've fallen off the plan sometimes, but I get back on the plan the next day. And I've made progress and I'm healthier. In fact, last, yesterday we were decorating for Christmas and the Christmas tree and the whole deal. And even about 9 p.m., Suzanne said, you're not huffing and puffing and needing an IV and, you know, drinking Gatorade and you're all worn out. You're like doing great. And I'm like, you know, I think it really, I am healthier than I was a year ago at Christmas. So I'm making progress. How did I do that? Systematically. But I know many of you, you, you think to get from here to there is just, I'll never be able to do it. I mean, I want to, and all of us want to think we're generous, and, and that's, yeah, I am a generous person, and not like really, but I want to be, in my mind I am, and one day I'm going to get back to this, and I'm, I'm going to do that. It just seems so insurmountable. And some of you even, you, 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 you apologize to me. Sometimes you apologize about your Bible. I haven't read the Bible in a long time, Pastor. And, and that gives me another concern that you actually think that your walk with the Lord is about you and me. It's not about you and me. I'm here to equip you for your own relationship with the Lord. I just know that throughout the centuries, there's been a few essential disciplines that are just part of every growing Christian. Bible study, prayer, generosity, these things just happen in the lives of Christians who are growing stronger in their faith. And what troubles me is that I might not have gotten you ready someday to stand before the Lord 
And I don't want you to have to try to explain to him because I didn't do my part to, to at least get you thinking about how would you answer if he said, why did you always have so, such an easy time paying for your Netflix or your cable TV or your dish TV or your Starbucks? You could not ever give anything back to my kingdom. I don't want you to have to answer that. Or if, I want you to have a good answer. Actually stored up treasures in heaven like the Bible talks about. So this is between you and him. So I'm going to give you two action steps, two growth steps. Well, the first is really a growth step, and the other one's a little different. The first one is I want to challenge you to baby steps in the same way I had to take some baby steps to finally just get serious about my intake of food because I like food too much. I had to take some baby steps, put together a plan and begin to work the plan. I wanna challenge you. Imagine how it would be if you set aside five or 10 minutes every day and said, you know, I'm gonna actually get up and sit in this chair and get a prayer journal and talk to the Lord and write down some names of some people who I've said, I'll pray for you, but I never really do pray for them, but I really will pray for them. Well, imagine how it'd be if you set aside five or 10 minutes just to get going, just baby steps. And, and you actually got the, on our app, the Bible reading plan or on any good site, a, a good Bible reading plan and begin to read God's word every day and to ponder it and to write some thoughts about it, what God's telling you. And suppose you got on a plan to start being faithful with your giving. If you just said, you know, every week I'm gonna give 10 bucks away, I can do that. I can forego a Starbucks or two. 10 bucks a week for the whole year, or maybe it's 20, or, or I don't, the, the amount is, it, it's, I'm just saying just to get going, or if you're a percentage kind of person, if you went in your budget and said, you know, I'm gonna do that with a half of, of 1%, I've gotta start somewhere. I hear these people talking about a tithe and maybe someday I'll be a tithe 10% or beyond and all that, but I gotta start somewhere. I wanna challenge you to start now. Let's take some steps together. I'm gonna take the same steps with you in all of this and be sure that there's no eye rolling here. There's no condescension. There's no like, well, finally you got around it. No, we're going to celebrate that the same way people have celebrated me making progress. Not a one of them said, well, you can think of it. You always were kind of a fatty and you know, they, they were always encouraging to me as it will be with you as you take steps in your own spiritual maturity. I want you to do that. That's the first. The second challenge is this. I told you about this, this group of people that kind of got sucked out on the tide of this economy. Um, and we're especially feeling this in the fourth quarter. And people who, I'm thinking one man who in tears said, I'm not gonna be able to do any year in giving. Um, and it kills him. He loves to be generous. And this is where our leadership team said, you know, what we need to do is lock arms as a congregation, come around these families and stand in the gap for them as we go towards the end of the year. And so what we're gonna do, and you got a letter about this this past week, perhaps you've already, you already know what I'm gonna say. We've created a special fund for just year end, okay? And this is for everybody. The first thing, the, the first action step was for those of you who you've been trying to sort of hanging out in the shadows and trying to be anonymous and you're gonna take a step forward and begin to grow. Um, this is for everybody, the second one. That is the Stand in the Gap Fund that we've created. You've got in your bulletin two envelopes. Um, one of the envelopes is the normal one that you have and one of them is this stand in the gap envelope. Here's our goal. In the next 27 days, we're gonna stand in the gap to the tune of $500,000 that we're gonna raise. It's gonna be primarily people who, this is their first baby step, in the, it's, it's time. 
But any number of you have said, but I already give regularly, and, and me too. Sure, you too. As the Lord leads you, I want you to give above and beyond, and let's come around these families. Let's stand in the gap. Uh, but I will trust you. It's a little an honor system thing, okay? If you are a regular giver and you already give systematically and, and strategically and all that kind of stuff, that's part of your life. I'm going to trust you not to move your offering that was coming in December from this envelope into this envelope, okay? Because then that kind of messes the whole calculation up, all right? I'll trust you this honor system. And if you're an online person, I hope you uh, are. It makes it even better and systematic. You just go online, but you will have to go online and activate this fund um, f f as well. And in the next 27 days, $500,000. Some of you are like, oh my gosh, that's an, is that even possible? Sure, it's possible. For a God who can raise the dead, who can heal the sick, of course it's possible. He can do immeasurably more than we could ever ask or imagine. In fact, just looking at it in the most practical of terms, if just a thousand people hearing my voice today, a thousand people were to say, it's time for me to just move off center. I gotta do something. If a thousand people were to say, by the end of the year, I, I'm gonna give $500. It's time for me to do something. Bam, there it is. Now, any number of you say, I couldn't do 500, but I could do 250 or 200 or 100 or, you know, it's great. Others of you say, $500, I can do $500. I can spend $500 in a night, you think to yourself. I could do 1,000. I could do 5,000. Great. You do what the Lord leads you to do. And together, we'll come around, we'll lock arms, we'll be uh, a church that stands in the gap for these folks as we all march forward together with greater health than perhaps we've ever had before as a congregation. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for um, each person who's here and for uh, their listening even now. This wasn't the sort of talk I was even expecting having to give, never had to give one like this. Uh, but I think I've been faithful to say what it is that you called me to say. Now, Lord, I pray that you would be faithful to help move the hearts of every person who's heard. Move them from the shadows, from saying, you know, this, this whole anonymous thing, it's kind of working for me. I think I'll just stay out here in the dark shadows of anonymity. I pray, God, that you would help them to say, no, it's time to step forward to be real, to be honest, to step into the light, to begin to take some responsibility for my spiritual growth. I pray, God, that you will help them to take those concrete steps and that you would do immeasurably more than we could ever ask or imagine. You're so good to us, Lord. You give us so much. Forgive us, Lord, for taking, 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 taking for granted all the things you give us and not being intentional enough about turning back around to you and saying, Lord, what can I give back to you? Help us to have transformations of the heart, Lord. Do a good work now, I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen.